that's, that's great. All right, so welcome everybody. So this is the second lab session and the third lecture essentially for this module. So uh, on this uh, lab sheet, the second lab sheet, you will be creating your first virtual machine in the cloud. In order to do this, various things and services need to be in place. All right. And it's, it's like a pyramid. So if you don't have one component, then the next component will not actually work. All right. So you need to be very careful of all of the steps that you make. And you need to be sure that the step worked before you move on to the next thing. All right. Now, you installed Open Nebula in the previous uh, lab sheet. And you should all be able by now to log in to the Soundstone web interface. All right, so that's at localhost 9868 or whatever it is. Now, once you're in there, today you will need to add the host, which will be the virtualization host that actually has the ability to start and run virtual machines. And then you need to set up a network card for your virtual machines to work on. You need to make sure that the data stores are there so that the images that you will create can be created and then create a template that will use those images in order to create a virtual machine that will start up in the cloud. All right, so they all depend on each other. So we need to make sure that everything happens correctly one by one. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to alter the networking on your Prometheus virtual machine. So at the moment you will have a network card called ENS33 and that network card will have an IP address of whatever your host has plus 100 okay so if you're on 65 it will be 165 and so on we're going to change this we're going to create a bridge and we're going to go full manual on this we're going to do it by altering the files that are located in the etc sysconfig network scripts folder because these are the configuration files that control the network cards on your linux system so the first file that we will change is called ifcfg ENS33. ENS33 is the name of your primary network card on Prometheus and it will have whatever information it has inside it at the moment. The first thing that I urge you to do is make a backup of this file. Copy this file and paste it into your home folder or anywhere you like because then later on in the lab sheets when we do the OVS networking lab sheets you will need to revert temporarily back into the original network card. All right. If you've gone through this step already and you haven't done this, it's fine. I have a template uh, default file on Moodle, so you can try and use that one instead. All right. Now, that file, you will need to open it with gedit. So when you type the gedit command on the terminal, it will open the file and it will be ready to edit. You can copy all of the contents, save them somewhere as a backup, and then delete everything from inside that file. Go to the lab sheet, copy all of those lines there, and paste them into that file. The easiest and safest way to do this is for your Prometheus virtual machine to be in full screen, and for you to have your browser with Moodle and the lab sheet open inside the virtual machine. If you have the virtual machine running in half your screen, and you have your lab sheet and everything else in the other half screen on the host, the text and characters, especially the minuses, will not copy correctly across and things will not work. All right. So every time you come into the lab, log in with your username, start up VMware Player, take it to full screen, start up the browser in there, open the lab sheet, open your logbook in Google Docs so that you can put screenshots in there and work like that. It's the safest way to do it. All right. So once you copy and paste the contents of this file from the lab sheet, uh, basically all it's telling the system is that the device name is ENS33. Uh, it will not give it priority over the other network cards when it's booting up. NM controlled equals no means this network card will no longer be controlled by the network manager. So it will not show up as a network card on your network card settings on the top right corner of your screen after you do everything. Okay, because we're going full manual with this. On boot, yes, means let the network card start at the time of boot, when the computer starts, when the virtual machine starts. It's an Ethernet card, and it's connected to a bridge that's called BR0. That BR0 bridge doesn't exist at the moment. However, the next command that you will type, the gedit, etc., sysconfig, network scripts, ifc, fgbr0, 
will create a file for a new network card that will be your BR0 bridge. In that file, when you type that command, it will be empty because you're creating it from a new, from new. You will need to copy and paste the contents of this second configuration box. Everything will be the same for everybody, just as this file, so default gateway, DNS, uh, prefix, and everything else. The only thing that will change for all of you is the IP address. The IP address will be 148.178.100 plus your host. So whatever you are, if you're on 70, it will be 170 and so on. Basically, it will be the same IP address as your ENS33 network card was. Make sure you remove the red letters from this. Yes, it should only have the IP address in there in the end. Once you do this, save and exit. Systemctl restart network.service or network space service space restart will restart the network service on your system and then that should create the new configuration that we want. If you type the command ifconfig then you should be able to see an ENS33 network card that is started but doesn't have any IP addresses and a BR0 network card that started and has the IP address that ENS33 used to have in the past. All right, so if you have this and if you can ping Google, it means that this works correctly and you can go on to the next step. Once we do that, it's time to move on to OpenEbula Sandstone onto the web interface for our cloud. And before we do that, we go into a terminal and we make sure that OpenNebula and OpenNebula Sandstone run and they automatically run every time you start your computer. So that's what those two commands, service open nebula restart and check config open nebula on, actually do. Once you type those two commands, then you can go on to the web browser and you can go on to hosts. You can clean, click on that uh, green plus button and you can add the host for your cloud. A secret is that I've already done this for you. So when you do go on to this website, you should see Prometheus NetLab Port AC UK as a host there already, and it should be in state on. Don't mess with it. If it is there and it's on, it's good. Take a screenshot of it, move on. If it's an error state, you missed one of the previous steps on the slap sheet, or even the previous slap sheet as well. Call us and we'll sort it out for you. All right. Theoretically, it should be there, it should be on, and you can just move on with it. Once you make sure that the host is there and it's working, you can go on to the next bit, data stores. There should already be three data stores by default from the uh, installation of OpenAbula in there. There should be a system, an image, and a file data store. Just go on to the appropriate section in storage, on the Open Nebula Sandstone interface and make sure that all three of them are there and they're in ready state and that's it. You don't actually need to do anything for this step. You will then need to go on to networks and you need to create our new custom bridge that we'll use in order to give internet access to the virtual machine that you will build inside your cloud. Follow the instructions on the lab sheet, name it bridge, connect it to ENS33, give it an IP address and so on and so forth. In the lab sheet itself, it says that the IP addresses for this need to be uh, the first IP address and so on. So you don't need to do this. When you reach this part, because things are a bit more complicated this year, basically call us and we'll tell you what address you need to use. The general rule is that if your computer has, let's say, an address of 65, and your Prometheus has an address of 165, then the virtual machine that you should be using for a bridge network card should be that plus 100 or plus 50. If it's plus 100 and it's beyond 255, obviously it's not a valid IP address, so you need to use plus 50. For the plus 50 rule, however, we need to make sure that it doesn't conflict with any of the other IP addresses in the lab itself. And that's why you need to call us so that we come and see which IP address you have, or you can just come to my desk. I have a list with all of the IP addresses in the lab, and I can tell you which one you can use. Okay, don't go past this step before verifying 
that you can actually use the IP address that you want to use for your bridge. Once you have the network done, then we need to go to images. The images are essentially the hard drives of the virtual machine that you're creating. We will need two images. The first one will be the actual hard drive, so blank empty space for you to use. And the second one will be the installation DVD for uh, the computer that you're building. Now, in order to create this, the first one, you'll need to create a vPrometheus Zero image, set it to generic storage data block, set it to persistent, make sure that it's an empty image, give 10 gigabytes of space, and definitely remember to do the format QCOW2 on the special, on the advanced settings of this. If you don't, everything else will fail after this. All right. So, once you do this, you will have your first image, which is the hard drive for the virtual machine. And then you need to create the second image, which will be the CentOS DVD-ROM, essentially. All right. And that you will create by using the ISO image for CentOS that you already have on your host computer. Just follow the instructions. It will take maybe a minute to get ready, wait for it, and only move on to the next step after both images show us ready on the system. Once you have your images, it means you have your hard drives. So now you can move on to creating a template. The template is basically uh, the recipe for the virtual machine. So it's the guide that will tell the virtual machine how many CPU cores it will have, how much memory, which hard drives, which network card, and so on. So you need to create a new template, give it two gigabytes of RAM, give it one physical and one virtual CPU, uh, set up the hard drives for it so it has little tabs on the top that you need to move through. When you set up the hard drives, not only do you need to have disk 0 and disk 1, they need to be selected. In the boot order later on, you need to check the boxes on the left of the hard drives. If you don't check the boxes, the system will have the hard drives, but not use them for some mysterious reason. All right. So when you see the two hard drives and check boxes on the left side, you need to tick those two boxes. All right. Otherwise, your virtual machine will start up and boot into a completely black screen with nothing in it because it doesn't know where to boot. All right. So once you set that, you set the network card and everything else that you need to do, you should be able to go to the next step, which is to go to the virtual machine instances. When we start a virtual machine in our cloud, we say that we instantiate it because it's just an instance of the virtual machine that's running. And in order to do that, you simply need to go and click on instantiated virtual machine give it a name, even if you don't give it a name, by default it will take the vPrometheus Zero name from the template that you created, and it should go through a process of booting up. So it should go through Prolog, uh, which is uh, the time where it copies the image from the images data store to the system data store where it runs. That can take maybe a couple of minutes, so just refresh the page until it becomes ready, until it says on. When it says on or running, then that means that your virtual machine has been created successfully and it's working and a little blue icon will appear next to it. You can click on it and that will VNC connect onto uh, the virtual machine itself in the browser. So there you can go and basically install the operating system. One thing to be very careful, lots of people missed it and on the Wednesday's group, the type of installation for the virtual machine in there you need to go into software selection and select GNOME Desktop. That's the only thing that I definitely want you to do in this installation. All right. If you don't, by default, it does a minimal install. The computer will build, it will restart, and you will be faced with a lovely black terminal that tells you to log in. Okay. Yes, it is a virtual machine. Yes, it works. You probably don't know how to use everything. All right, because there's only command line, there's no graphical user interface, there's no GNOME desktop. All right, so make sure you check the GNOME desktop option in the software selection option during the installation. And then once you do that, the version should be running and you are good to move on to the next step. Okay, so be careful through the steps in the lab. If something goes wrong and it's not giving you the, you know, the result that you expected, don't say, eh, I will ignore it, let's see what happens. Bad things will happen, which usually means us 
redeleting and restoring your Prometheus virtual machine. So don't do that. Yes? You can stack on something. There's plenty of us. Raise your hand, call us, and we'll come and help you. All right. Yes? Uh, and, uh, IP address. Yes. So what, what is the IP address for the... Uh, so for the virtual machine that you will be building, the general rule that we use is whatever IP address you have on your Prometheus plus another 100 or 50. Okay. But before you do this, please call us to come to your desk and have a look at it and make sure that it doesn't conflict with any of the other addresses in the lab. Okay. All right. Thank you very much.